Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Bloke Aiden. I'm G. I'm Sophie. Today we're doing five ways British and American kitchens are very different. Now, uh, this one's more aimed at you two. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Nah, I'm joking. We'll definitely know it to is fair, aimed at you now. No, it's just in America. It's just in America. <laughs> no, to be fair, I, I, the first one's just like a What's media, that? a kettle. They don't have them in America. A tea kettle. You never seen a tea kettle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I was, I was just asking you. <laughs> I, I would just say it's a kettle. Yeah, but so Why in, in America, stove? do they they only use them? Don't they, like a stove kettle? They don't use. They don't have like a proper Le electric, electric kettle. Kettles that plug in. Do you know what? I don't remember. I don't remember having an electric kettle. No. In America. No. Yeah. Yeah. Strange. It's not really a thing, is it? Or, they're more into like, like coffee machines and stuff. Yeah, everybody has a coffee machine. And did we drink? I don't think we even drank tea. <gasps> I couldn't survive without my cup of tea. Yeah, I don't remember having an electric kettle. Can you name anything else that you reckon are different? Well, the kitchens are a lot bigger over there. Open plan. Over here. The That's more... just because the houses are Tire. generally bigger. Yeah. Yeah, but over here, normally the kitchen is, is just one room. And then you would have a separate living room and then a separate dining room. Yeah. Whereas there it's more open plan and it, the kitchen looks into... I prefer it that way. I do as well. I like, I like the like, kitchen islands. I yeah. think they're really yeah. nice. Yeah. I like a breakfast bar and stuff. I like it when I'm cooking and then I can still talk to people. Or, or you can still TV. watch the TV, yeah. 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 The only problem is, Ooh. is the smell. If you're cooking something that's quite strong. Smelling, yeah, it smells the whole place, the whole doesn't bells. it? This is a loss in the pond as well. We we love a bit of loss in the we pond, do. don't we? Yeah. So. We do. Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to kitchens. It's that time of year again, of course, when food sees its approval rating shoot to new heights. And while I continue to look at the way in which British and American food varies wildly, the same is true of kitchens. Sure, some American kitchens on the whole might be larger than their British counterparts, just, just by, by virtue, virtue of the fact that houses are. But, but for once, I'm not going to concentrate on size. Instead, today, I'm going to stick a rubber gloved hand deep down into the details of how we use our kitchens. From etiquette to gadgets, here are five ways that British and American kitchens are very different. I don't know if you've heard this or not, but my homeland of Britain may or may not be obsessed with tea. We're so obsessed, in fact, that when everybody was worried about running out of toilet roll, we were clearing the shelves of PG tips. And our obsession with tea can be seen through the gadget we use to make it, the electric kettle. An electric kettle is a kettle that is electric. That is, you plug it into the wall. Now, I don't have British plug sockets where I live, so what you're seeing right now is not completely authentic. But the electric kettle at my house is made by the British company Russell Hobbs. You simply plug it in, put water in it, switch it on, then wait for it to boil. Now, any British people watching this might be thinking, how on earth do Americans make tea? Well, firstly, Americans don't drink tea quite as much as British people. And secondly, even though America doesn't have a royal family, Coffee is king. Not literally, that would be absurd. But for Americans who do drink tea or hot drinks that aren't coffee, they usually have stovetop kettles. They work much the same way as electric kettles, except you don't plug them in, and the only thing that you turn on is the stove. I have to say, while I don't have a major preference between both types of kettles, there is something a little bit satisfying about a kettle that whistles. Plus, that way, you know when it's done. Even if you're in another... We did have a tea kettle like that. It was red. I just remembered. What, in America? Yeah. Did you used to make your tea, like, on the stove like that? Or not boil very, the boil very... water on the stove? Yeah, not very often, though. We, we had a coffee maker. And we used to just press the button and it ground the beans and the coffee would come out. That's a lot of effort, that. How long do you reckon it does it take to boil? About five minutes. Really? Whereas a kettle is what, yeah. 30 seconds? Yeah. yeah. They're a lot cheaper that to use. Electricity is a lot yeah, more yeah. expensive than gas. Another wing of your house. Another room of your house. Either way, when it comes to Britain, the electric kettle is not the only kitchen gadget. 
that uses water. Washing machines in a kitchen? Sorry America, for most Brits this is a harsh reality. I say harsh, most of us wouldn't want it any other way. When I was growing up, the washing machine was right there next to the kitchen sink. It was an easy way to consolidate chores and get chicken curry in your underpants. <laughs> and it doesn't end there because a lot of British washing machines also contain a dryer in one machine. It's not a great idea because the dryer is usually rubbish. Hence why a lot of Brits still put their clothes out on a washing line. Across the pond, look around most kitchens in the United States and you won't find a washing machine. You might sometimes find them in a kind of pseudo laundry room that's attached to the kitchen, but not normally beneath the microwave. I do hope all of that sinks in and speaking of sinks, that brings us on. I've never seen anyone's house with a, ma a washing machine in the kitchen. So... <laughs> Our first house, our kitchen was probably, well, it was, it was 10 foot by 4 foot. It was tiny, it was like a little galley. And you walked in and you had the stove, the cooker. Then this was a countertop, and then underneath the countertop was a fridge, which right. was about this big, which was like the fridge out there. Okay. And then next to that was a cupboard that was under the sink, and then you had the sink, then the window, then another countertop, and underneath was the washing machine, and dryer. That was, and then the back door, that was it. Really? And then we had two cupboards that you put your, like, your dishes in, for, yeah. you know, your plates and stuff, but it was tiny. But if you think most homes in the UK have the washing machine in the kitchen, but Probably yeah. because you've been to your friends' houses who have probably got quite large houses. They'll have a separate room like for... a utility Not room. really, I wouldn't say. I've only ever known kitchens to have the washing, washing machines machine in, in the any kitchen. home I've ever been to. They all have washing machines. Yeah, when I lived at home, the washing machine was in the kitchen. Yeah. Even Declan's house, his washing machine is, in, is on a different floor to his kitchen. Yeah, that's because he's got three storeys and so on the bottom floor... The it's a wash, washing, I, it's washing, a washing room. Machine. Yeah, and that's what we had when we lived in Lim. But if you think of... Even now, where we live now, it's an apartment and it's a different... We have a washing room. Yeah, it's, it's, like just, a, like it's, a it's just a cupboard, but it's away from the kitchen. Yeah, but most houses mm. have the, the washing machine in the... Yeah. I didn't know that. In the kitchen. Yeah. When you went to <laughs> Harrison's house and you went to his kitchen, did you have a washing machine in no. there? No. Where was it? In a, like a cupboard like ours. Oh, okay. Because they do have, like, in the kitchen, you open a cupboard door and the washing machine's there in the kitchen. Yeah. No, yeah, I, think, I think, I think it might have been in his basement, mm. actually. Yeah. yeah. I think it was in his basement. Yeah. To this. Join me now and imagine a dystopian future in which humanity has run out of dishwashers. What would we do? Well, the answer to that question might depend on the country that you live in. For example, Americans would be more likely than Brits to hand wash their dishes under water running from a tap. On the other hand, Brits might be more likely than Americans to clean them in a sink filled with hot water. This is partly done to be more economical with water use, but it's also because British homes didn't, and in some cases still don't, have mixer taps. In other words, most British homes were equipped with separate hot and cold taps. And so cleaning dishes under a running hot tap might result in third degree burns. <laughs> However, primed almost universally with mixer taps, which help them to regulate temperature, Americans don't have to worry about that. Additionally, American kitchen sinks often come equipped with gadgets that might seem alien in some British homes. For example, and this is one of my favourites, the garbage disposal. This is a mechanical feature inside plug holes that breaks up waste. It's also the cause of death for 57% of people in American horror films. And the other <laughs> delightful gadget that's found in a lot of American sinks is the sprayer hose. This is kind of a pre-clean thing where you spray all of the gunk off the plate and then you clean your plate under regulated warm water. So okay, in this dishwasherless dystopian nightmare, both countries do at least have options, but what about when it comes to drying the dishes? In Britain, it's fairly normal not to rinse the soap off before letting the dishes dry on the drying rack. 
Once there, the soap, in theory, slides off or dissolves. It was hard to explain that to my American wife because Americans, for the most part, rinse off the soap with tap water or, if you're feeling lucky, the sprayer hose and either leave it to dry in the drying rack or may or may not get to it straight away with a towel. Now, I've never been passionately in favour of one method over the other. But Yeah, I wouldn't have thought... I wouldn't have... I would have always washed... There was soap on a plate and I was... I've, Put on a drying rack, I'd 100% rinse the soap off. Yeah, I would. I did as well, do mm. you? Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. I have one of them little, uh, you know, dishmatics. Yeah. It's like little sponge, it's like a, you mm. fill up like the, yeah. the handle with the soap so yeah. it like automatically comes out. Yeah. Because I don't mm. like a, a bowl of like water, I just rinse it. See, that's one it of my. my hand though, but. That's one of my uh, things that I can't do. If there's a bowl of soapy water and there's dishes in it. Yeah. And then you don't pour it away straight away. Yeah. Or a sink, and then you have to put your hand in the sink yeah. to take the plug out, and it, the water's cold and dirty. Oh, it's it, got like bits swirling around. It, you were just putting your hand in there in the first to take the dishes out. It's not great, is it? it? Then my hand gets like itchy and yeah, it's just like ooh. And it's the water just <laughs> smells. I just yeah, it's not for me. Yeah. Dishmatic all the way. But the argument often thrown forward for the British way is that rinsing can leave water stains, and I suppose that's true if you're lazy and thinking about it, I am. If I wasn't, I probably wouldn't make use of these. Egg cups. Egg cups. What on earth is an egg cup? And I'm not exclusively throwing that question at Americans, because Americans of a certain region or generation have often told me, oh, we had those growing up. I don't, that was really British, sorry. But the fact is most Americans are probably not familiar with egg cups and most certainly don't have them in their houses. On the other hand, according to a law that I just made up, it's illegal for British kitchens not to have one. We're even handed them at birth. The parents walk away with a baby, an egg cup, and four boxes of PG tips. But what do we use them for? Well, I'm glad you asked, because this is where the lazy part of Lawrence comes in. They house soft-boiled eggs, and these are soft-boiled eggs that have had the top knocked off them. I've never been really good at that part. And what you do is you dip toast or bread soldiers into the egg. And it is the most amazing breakfast in the whole world, and you're all wrong, shut up. Egg cups. I do realise that for some of you, you've just learned a new word. The perfect segue into this. Just to bring us full circle, there are, of course, many British and American word differences when it comes to food. I have done and will continue to do videos on that. But here's a short sample of variations in kitchen lingo. In Britain, whether or not the hot and cold taps are unified, tap is the word we go for. And while I have heard that word applied in the United States, Americans will often opt for faucet. And sometimes what? when the plumbing's bad and the water won't come out, you might have to force it. <laughs> Sorry, that joke only works in Britain. Anyway, whether it is tap or force it, you will need one to do the washing up. Washing up, that's what Americans say when they just take five minutes to clean themselves. The in Britain, that's our phrase for doing the dishes. And if we're not being lazy, we might dry the dishes by hand. In order to do this, we use what is known as a tea towel. In America, I've heard many variants on this, but you might be hard pressed to find somebody that uses the term tea towel. Instead, in Indiana, I think I most commonly heard dish towel. In my house, I don't know about anybody else's, these can often be found hanging from the oven. I don't know why I did that, because actually both countries use the word oven. But in Britain, we also call it a cooker, and that's something for which my wife has ridiculed me for 15 years. <laughs> Thank you for watching this latest Vlogmas episode. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with all of my daily videos. Yeah, never even heard of force really? in my life. Are you not? No. Yeah. yeah. What, it's just a tap? That's what That's they what call a tap? Yeah. We call the tap a faucet. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's like Do we have egg cups at home? We do, yeah. Do we? Yeah. You're going to make some dippy egg and salt some dip yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I might do that, to be honest. But I, prefer, I do like a boiled egg, but I prefer it when it's like hard in the middle. Oh, you do? So it's not yeah. like, I don't really dip my heart. Like, you don't like yolk? Like, I, I like yolk. I like runny yolk. I, like, I just prefer it when it's harder. I like to buy the hard boiled eggs with the shell taken off and you can just eat them like... The yeah, I do like, but I just wouldn't do that. I'd always have to just make it myself. I reckon. You do. Yeah. Kind of makes me feel a bit. I'm not like I'm really funny with eggs and like the thought of it being in like a little plastic container and it, I can't stand like full eggs like a not like you know like boiled egg. It actually freaks me out. Why? Like I love egg sandwiches. Like I'll make it and then I'll mash it up, but something about a full egg, even touching it, I like I, I just go all like oh.
Oh, I love that. Just keeps me out. When the cold just eating it ate, eating eggs like. Mm. It's good for you. Yeah. I wish like I wish I could, but no. Yeah. Just bung, they bung you up though. They what? Bung you up. Oh. <laughs> Too right. many eggs. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button for us and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Cheers. Bye.